Assalamu alaikum everybody, I hope you're doing well. Um, in the previous video we went over perfect squares factorization, so if you missed that video, I can, uh, you know, I can put the link to it in the description and I encourage you to watch it before watching this video. Um, just because in this video we're just going to be practicing what we learned in that previous video. So check that out first, just so this video makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so the first example I want to go through is the following. I want to factorize 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. And I'm going to paste the form that we used in the previous video. It's not, not exactly the same one. I mean, it's the same one, but this is just another form that I've created just because I needed to, you know, make the brackets a little bit bigger. Anyways, um, so we ask ourselves the question. That's the first question we ask ourselves. Are there two things that are being squared over here? Usually those two things are in the beginning, the first term, and the last term. So let's look at 9x squared. What do we square to get 9x squared? And, you know, you we might not be able to guess that immediately, so let's do some work. So, I mean, as you practice more and more, you will be able to maybe guess it immediately, but right now let's do some rough work. So 9x squared can be broken down into, the 9 can be broken down into 3 times 3. Okay, and x squared can be just broken down into x times x. So does it look like we're multiplying something by itself? Now, we might not be able to notice that immediately, but if I, let's say if I take one of those x's and I put it in between one of those threes, right, and I can do that, right, because the order in which you multiply doesn't matter. So then I just get 3x times 3x. Right, and so now I know what, what I multiply by itself to get 9x squared. And so 9x squared is just basically equal to the quantity 3x all squared. And notice I put quantity as in, like I put the brackets just to indicate that it's not just the x that's being squared, it's the 3 as well, right? So it's 3x all squared. All right, so now, what I, now I know that uh, if I square 3x, I get 9x squared. So let, let's, uh, let's actually write that down here. 3 x. Okay, so that's good for the first term that's being squared. Now is there another thing that's being squared over here? Um, now the negative 6x is doesn't look like we can square something to get negative 6x, so I'm going to skip that. All right, I'm going to go to the 1 here. What do we square to get a 1? Now there are two things we could square. We could square 1 itself, because 1 squared is just 1, right? 1 times 1 is just 1. Or we could square negative 1, right? Because negative 1 times negative 1, the negatives cancel each other out, and we're left with 1. Okay? So I can choose negative 1 or 1. Now, which one do I pick? So let's, let's test out the 1 first. Okay, let's say, let's say it's a 1. Okay? So that's the, that's the first question we ask ourselves here, right? Are there two things that are being squared? Yes, there are. Right, there is this 9x squared and there is this one. And we filled out uh, what we square to get those terms, right? Now we ask ourselves the question, is the middle term two times the first term that's being squared times the second term that's being squared? So let's write that down. Is negative 6x two times 3x times one? And the answer is, not quite, right? Because this gives us 6x right here, right? 2 times 3 is just 6, and then we have an x, so 6x times 1 is just 6x, right? But this will be a positive 6x. We need a negative 6x, right? And how do we do that? So instead of multiplying by 1, we need to multiply by negative 1 here. And so we just change that 1 into a negative 1. So now we know that, okay, it should be a negative 1 over here because we need the middle term to be a negative. So we just put a negative 1. Okay? And now we notice there are two things that are inside all of those brackets. There are 3x and there are negative 1. Okay, and all we got to do is combine them together into an expression 3x and negative 1, and we just square that expression. And if we square that, we just get this over here. So we factorize this expression into this. 
Okay, so I hope that made sense. Um, let's uh, try another example. All right, let's um, let's factorize negative eight x squared um, minus twenty four x minus eighteen. And again, let's use our the, the form that we've created here. Okay, so again, the first question we ask ourselves is: Are there two things that are being squared? So let's look at the negative 8x squared. Now there is a red flag here immediately. There is a negative sign. And no matter what we square, we're not going to get a negative sign, unless you're dealing with complex numbers, which we're not dealing with here. All right? So even if you're squaring, let's say, a negative term, let's say negative, I don't know, 3x, all squared, right? This is just equal to negative 3x times negative 3x, right? And the negatives cancel each other out. So it doesn't matter if you square a negative term, a positive term, the, the results should be something that's positive, okay? Um, and so it doesn't look like there, there's anything that we could square to get negative 8x squared. All right, so let me remove that part. Now, so this doesn't work. Is there anything other than negative 8x squared that's being squared here. Well, it doesn't look like it because the, the other terms that we have here, negative 24x and negative 18 are both negative as well, right? So there's nothing that we could square to get negative 18, right? Because it's negative. There is no real number that we could square to get negative 18. Now we could square 18i <laughs> and if we square that, we just get negative 18, because i here is, is an imaginary number. It's the square root of negative 1, okay? And um, this will achieve a negative 18, but that's not what we're looking for here, okay? This is a little bit advanced. We're not going to worry too much about it, okay? So it doesn't look like we could, you know, use perfect squares factorization here. So what do we do? Let's remove that form, in fact. Let's just remove it for now. We don't want to deal with it for now because it doesn't look like it could, you know, help us in the time being. Okay, so let's try to factorize this just normally, right? There is an 8, there is a 24, there is an 18, so they're all even here. And so 2 is a factor of them all, right? So I could pull out a 2. And in fact, in this case, I could pull out a negative 2 because every term here is negative. Negative, negative, negative. So I can, so a negative is in common between them and a 2. So negative two. Okay, I could pull that out. Now I'll open my brackets here. And what do I multiply negative two by to get negative eight x squared? It's just four x squared. Right? And then negative two times what gives me negative 24 x? It's just positive 12 x. Right? It's not negative 12 x because a negative 12 x here would give me you know, negative 2 times negative 12x would be a positive 24x because the negatives will cancel each other out, right? So that doesn't work, so it needs to be a positive 12x. Now, negative 2 times what is negative 18? It's just positive 9. Okay, so we're done with, uh, you know, factorizing this a little bit, but let's see if we can, uh, you know, factorize this expression a little bit more. Okay, and maybe here, maybe we could apply the method of you know perfect squares factorization. So let's use the form now. Okay, let's put it down here. And okay, so what do we square to get four squared? The first question: Are there two things that are being squared? Well, let's let's see. So let's look at the four x squared first. What do we square to get four x squared? Let's do some rough work. 4x times, uh, sorry, 4x squared is equal to, 4 is 2 times 2, right? And then x squared is just x times x. So, and if we rearrange that, this is equal to 2x times 2x. So, we, we just square 2x to get 4x squared, right? So, we just square 2x. Okay, so that's good. Um, 
we get one thing that's being squared, so that's that's a good sign so far. What about the nine? Um, it, is it a square number? And the answer is yes. There are two numbers we can multiply by themselves <laughs> to get a nine, and those are three and negative three. Right? Which one do I choose? Do I choose three or negative three? I mean, I could test them out and see what works, uh, just as we did in the previous example. But as I said in the last video, um, you could look at the middle term. Now we want the middle term to be positive, and we want the middle term to be two times the first term that's being squared, which is two x. So let me write that down. Times the second term that's being squared, which we're still trying to figure out, right? So do we choose a positive here or a negative? Now the middle term is positive, and two x is also positive. So two times two x is a positive result. So if we multiply that by a positive it's going to give us the positive that we want. If we multiply by negative, we're not going to get a positive you know, result. So um, we, we're looking for positive 12x. OK, so this must be positive. And so I'm going to put a 3, because that's the positive out of the 2. All right? And so I'm going to put a 3 here. And now let's see, is the middle term 2 times the first term that's being squared times the second term that's being squared? Well, let's see. 12x, is it 2 times 2x times 3? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And 12 times x is definitely 12x. So that is exactly what we wanted. And so we, and then we just look at what are the two terms that are inside all of those brackets. There are two only, 2x, right, and a positive 3. So we combine them together. And we square that. And don't forget, that there's a negative 2 here initially. We just factorize this expression. But we're, don't forget, we're multiplying it by negative 2. So negative 2. OK, so I hope that made sense. Um, let's uh, try one more example. OK, uh, let's say we want to factorize uh, 16 a to the fourth. And a to the fourth just means we're multiplying four a's together. Plus eight a squared plus one. Okay, again, same questions, right? What is the first thing that's being, uh, no, no, what is it? Are there two things that are being squared? So let's use our form. Okay, let's look at the 16 a to the fourth. Um, what do we square to get 16a to the fourth? Maybe we're not able to guess that immediately, so let's do some work. So 16a to the fourth. Well, 16 is just 4 times 4. And a to the fourth is just 4a's multiplied together. Okay. Now, notice there are two 4's and there are 4a's. Okay, so we could put, we could pair uh, one four with two a's, right? So we can write that as four times a times a times four times a times a. Okay, so this is just equal to four a squared times four a squared. And so this can just be written, 16a to the fourth can be written as the quantity 4a squared, all squared, okay? So, um, so that's it. We're, we're done with the work that, um, the rough work that we needed to know what, what we square to get 16a to the fourth. So let me just get rid of that. Okay, and now we just put 4a squared. Okay, and um, we go to the 1, last thing over here. What do we square to get 1? Well, we square 1 or negative 1. Now, which one do we put? I see that 8a squared is positive here, right? And so we want the middle term to be 2 times the first term that's being squared times the second term that's being squared. The first term that's being squared is positive, right? So let me put 4a squared over here. And so 
in order for us to in order for this to remain positive, we need to multiply by something positive. So we need that to be positive over here. So we can't we can't really use negative one. So it's just one. Okay, and we put a one here. Now we ask ourselves a question: Is this middle part is it equal to this? Right, and we see two times four a squared is 8a squared times 1 is just 8a squared. So that's exactly what we wanted. All right, so we just open up our brackets. And we write 4a squared plus 1. Right, those are the only two terms that are inside all of those brackets, 4a squared and 1. And then we just square the result. And that's it. Okay, so uh, I hope that was simple, guys. Um, trust me with uh, practice, you're going to get a lot better at this. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. And I hope you enjoyed the video and found it simple. And I will see you next time.